Hey, does that thing have a Hemi? Sure does, 5.7 liter. Hemi V8 in a 2016 Doge Ramicus 1500. Uh, this particular truck has approximately, let's hit that key down there. We're looking like, come on mileage, wake up. Starting the engine, 87,447 miles on the odometer. Now this particular truck is uh, being gifted uh, to a, uh, a child now i believe this particular truck is going off to college and uh before it leaves i think the uh, owner wants to make sure it's all in tip-top shape now we've uh, already done some previous work in this vehicle in another episode uh, i will leave a link to that one down in this video's description uh, below i'll also place it at the pinned comment but uh, what we had started with on this truck was a leaking exhaust manifold on the passenger side due to a broken bolt in the cylinder head uh, it was a fairly easy extraction, it only took a couple hours, went in through the wheel well, pulled the manifold off, welded a nut to the broken bolt, spun the thing right out, easy peasy, put new hardware in it, and the exhaust noise has been sealed up. Uh, in this uh, episode, what we're going to do is take a peek at the spark plugs, and we're going to see if this thing is ready for a tune-up. Now, one thing to notice about these 5.7 Hemis is, although it's a V8, this unit has 16 spark plugs in total there are two spark plugs per cylinder now we can see the ignition coils here here and then two more back there and there which uh, that's going to be fun to get to so this is going to be the hard side over here on the driver i'm sorry passenger side we've got a coil another coil and then the other two they're a little bit buried but they're back there so what we need to do is get our intake system off. We're gonna get the engine cover removed, gain some access to this V8 Hemi, and we're gonna pull off probably uh, the easiest uh, coils first, just so we can have um, some inspection or get one of the plugs out for inspection. And at that point, we can determine uh, if we need to replace these uh, ignition components or uh, put them back and leave them alone. So, stay tuned. Because after we change these spark plugs, we're gonna run some system cleaner through the intake manifold and get this thing in tip-top running condition so it will be a safe, reliable, and good running vehicle while it is off at school and away from home. So effectively, we're actually doing two operations at one time. We're gonna do the uh, chemical intake cleaning uh, and we're gonna do uh, what would be considered a tune-up. Uh, I find that to be a relatively vague term these days because we don't actually like tune anything. Uh, back in the day, you used to tune your carburetors and you would set spark plug gap and make sure that uh, there wasn't excessive erosion. Uh, we used to have points to set up, but these days with the computer controlled electronic components, uh, the, uh, the tune up is uh, kind of fading away and it's just sort of a relative vague term that people use nowadays, which doesn't really describe much of a, an operation. So we're doing a tune-up, even though I hate the term tune-up. But regardless, it is time. The vehicle needs some maintenance, and that's what we're gonna get to today. Wow, take a look at that throttle body. It's a, it's a little carboned up in there. We're gonna clean that out too. So let's pop this engine cover off if, uh, if we can here, and we'll gain some access to our ignition components. Yeah, this is gonna be fun to reach. Here, cover. There we go. Look, I found an engine. It's inside. And a little wasp nest. Hello, dirt daubers. I hope no one's home. Insect genocide. Yeah, that would be fun. You grab the nest and smash it, and there's a there's a bug inside with a stinger. Flying buzzing things. They're not my particular favorite friends. Anyway, this side looks like it's gonna be relatively easy. Four connectors on the coils, two bolts per coil. We pull the coil out, that's gonna expose the two bolt bolts. And then under that, we're gonna expose the uh, two spark plugs. So let's get after it. I'm going to attempt some uh, slight experimentation here. We're gonna see if I can extract these uh, coils without disconnecting the connectors. Sometimes that can be achieved. There's enough slack in the, in the little wire here to get it apart. And other times, that cannot be achieved and we just have to uh, fully disassemble everything. 
So let's find out which option we get on this particular truck. And it looks like I'm lucking out so far. Yeah, look at here. Two coils, or two coil boots. Two spark plug boots on one coil. Plugs are buried down in the holes there, so let's get the spark plug socket in there and get one of these units extracted. Okay, spark plug socket coming in. We've got the socket with a little magnet inside to hang onto the plug. We've got a universal and an extension. So that should uh, help us get uh, good access down to those plugs quite easily. The extension's a little long. Yeah. I'm gonna need a shorter one for the rear plugs. Okay, let's see what we get here. Hmm, NGK IRs. So I believe these have been replaced once before. Let me grab a, uh, a gauge and we're gonna gap these plugs and see if the, the gap is worn out or not. Okie doke, so taking a look here at our uh, at our spark plugs. Let's bring the gauge on over. Here's our old plug, and here's one of the new ones. Now I did pull out an NGK, so that tells me these have been replaced. However, they've also got the red mark on the end of it, which suggests to me that those could be original. So I'm I'm really not certain. These uh these appear to be in the 80,000 mile range old, but. Uh, well, it's kind of a tough call because I would expect to have found like a Mopar or a Champion or some other kind of plug in here. So I don't know if these are original to the car or if they've been changed once upon a time. Uh, but regardless, we're going to let the spark plug gap uh, determine whether or not we need to replace these units or not. So we just saw earlier that the spec is, I think, 43 thousandths of an inch. And 43 thousandths right here. If we continue the slide... These things are gapping out at like 67 thousandths of an inch. So we do have some excessive gap going on uh, with these plugs uh, as they've come out. Now, we take the, uh, the new replacement plug, and again, these being an iridium, they should be pre-gapped. So we're gonna check these for a 43 thousandths gap. And this one's coming in right here at 40, uh, maybe 41 thou. So that tells me that these particular plugs do show some excessive wear on them. So I am going to go ahead and proceed and replace these units with uh, the uh, the new NGKs in the boxes over here. And again, we have 16 of these bad boys. 16 spark plugs for eight cylinders. Now I know what you're thinking. Great, good job, Ray. You're going to make a like a snake oil intake cleaning type of video or just a parts changing video. So I'm gonna to try to do something to spice this up a little bit. I've got this uh, little boroscope right here. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna pull these plugs out and I'm gonna run this boroscope down inside of the cylinders and we're gonna get a uh, just a good visual representation on like carbon buildup and dirt and things of, uh, of that nature inside of the combustion chamber. Once the spark plugs are back in, I'm going to run this big huge can of cleaner through this vehicle's intake system, which is going to enter those combustion chambers and uh, do its bidding, or do its job rather, to, to clean out any carbon that may be building up inside of there. Uh, once we put the plugs in, run the cleaner through it, go out on a test drive, I'm going to come back and we're going to pull a couple of the plugs out. We're going to go back in with the boroscope and then we're going to see if there's any kind of a difference between the before and after the cleaner so we're gonna it's like multifaceted we're gonna do a tune-up and we're gonna do an experimentation to see if uh, any of my cleaning products are actually effective and that way we can put that controversy to bed uh, once and for all it's either snake oil slash lizard lotion or it is a highly effective cleaning product that actually does work in the real world and this video is going to determine that once and for all now i uh, i fully intend to make this a quick and enjoyable and uh educational type of video so I'm going to move rather quickly to get to the meat of the uh, the topic at hand here. So we're just going to get all this stuff pulled out super fast, like no dilly-dallying around. We're just going to get it done.
But keep in mind, this is also the easy side over here, and I'm gonna have to uh, enter something of a world of hurt when I go to get around to the uh, the driver's side because space is uh, more limited on that side than it is over here. And I'm even running out of space over here. This is getting good. Got that last bolt. I'm gonna have to get that one by hand. It's way out back. You know, this situation back here actually presents uh, an interesting opportunity to uh, drop my flashlight to unveil a, a product that I've recently discovered that I'm curious uh, curious about and I'd like to work with a little bit. It appears to be a regular ratchet, but these are what's called a, a zero drive ratchet. It is a zero degree non-ratcheting ratchet that actually uses a, a magnetic uh, type of mechanism inside and does not actually have teeth like a regular ratchet. So the return side of this is completely smooth and it has virtually zero backlash when working against a fastener. Almost nothing there. And I'll compare that to a very fine tooth snap-on ratchet and we can hear if the background noise would stop, we can hear there's some clicking action going on here. That is the ratcheting mechanism inside that is functioning. The difference between this ratchet and this one is the internal mechanisms, and this one does not have any kind of ratcheting mechanism inside of there. It's really, really good from my understanding of these uh, very tight spaces. So I'm gonna try to use this guy to dig out that last 10 mil down there and uh, hopefully it'll uh, it'll perform as intended and make this operation slightly easier space down there is super limited on uh, on this last coil bolt oh nice and smooth yeah I'm liking this this is the first time I've used this ratchet but even with that fastener being loose, I can see that it is, uh, it's working and rebounding without retightening as I, uh, I go to move the ratchet around. So that's a, that's a good first impression. Now I'm not selling these things right now or anything. I'm in the experimental stage. Uh, I managed to get this uh, particular ratchet right here as a sample. That way I can put it out in the field and just see if it can survive the, uh, the abuse and the torture of a real life technician putting it through its paces. But if it turns out to be a superior quality product, which something that's something I favor, then I may end up featuring these things for sale on my website at rainmanraysrepairs.com. Uh, they're not there right now. I gotta make sure it's uh, in good quality condition or of good quality. The thing that got my interest peaked with zero drive uh, overall is it's a 100% manufactured in the United States. It's a domestic product. Unlike some of the cars we have nowadays where you think they're domestic products and they're, they're made in France or something, or who knows where, Bangladesh, uh, no offense to the French or anybody else for that matter. It's just, uh, well, Americans like stuff made in America. Here we go, that's our last coil. Pull that guy out. So now all of our plugs here are exposed. We're gonna go back in with the electron ratchet and spin the rest of these guys out. Man, I said I was gonna make this fast and I started turning this into a sales pitch for a, a new ratchet. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> By the way, nobody paid me to say anything good about that ratchet. Maybe later, but this is a not sponsored video. Okay, real quick gap check on this one. It's another NGK. We're looking at uh, 54 thousandths of gap on that unit. So not as bad as the first one, but it is uh, still out of spec. Sixteen spark plugs. If 
Okay, that's six removed. A couple more down here. Uh, what are we stuck on? Stuck on, there's a bunch of stuff in the way, like a PCM bracket and a wiring harness. that last one in the back should be kind of fun but I got a specialized little unique double wobbly bit socket here I'm gonna try to sneak this guy in on that last hole and hopefully it gives me the angles that I need to uh, to run the thing out the heater core lines are in the way yeah space is a premium I think oh I know you guys can't see what I'm what I'm doing because this harness is in the way. Uh, my apologies for such things. But I can't really do much about that. Come on. Come on. Why? Please just go in there. Please go in all the way. This ought to be fun to dig out later on when that spark plug's loose. There we go. Okay, that's in. It has engaged the plug. I was gonna do this fast, didn't I? I lied. This is not fast. I know. I'm gonna take the tool off the socket and then drop the socket down in the hole and then fish it out with a magnet. All right, magnet on a stick. A little flexi magnet at that. Reach back in there and Grab that spark plug socket. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing back there. My my apologies is what it is. And there's our, our last unit. And again, that's also a, an NGK. Okay. All right, let us go ahead and get this boroscope down into the cylinders right here. And we're gonna take a visual on uh, what these uh, pistons look like down below okay so right here that's our spark plug tube there's our threads let's get ourselves past the threads and into the combustion chamber here wiggle that guy in there we go nice good view in here you see the cylinder wall good cross hatching and the piston see there is a fair bit of buildup on that piston surface okay so that was our first cylinder right here let's go back into the uh, the second cylinder and we're gonna check out what uh, what that pistons looking like again we see a bit of carbon on there and nothing crazy a little bit building up on the edges see the edge of the piston there a little deeper bunch of carbon right there going back to the next cylinder in line and I think we're getting the picture here so I'm not gonna fight with the rear cylinder when we go back in after the cleaning uh, oh this is going right here when we go back in after the cleaning we're just gonna go after the really easy to see cylinders now we can see this one here that's got a bunch of carbon built up on it you see how it kind of flakes off in certain spots and then it's got build up in other spots yeah, a whole bunch of it around the edge of the piston. 
and on the top of the piston. Okay. So now we have evidence of how much carbon's actually in there. Let's go ahead and throw the spark plugs back into this unit. We'll get this side tightened down and we'll put the coils back in with some dielectric lubricant. Then we can go and uh, hit the other side up real quick. Like, so there's four plugs, number five. I'm not dropping these in the hole either. I'm just kind of sliding them down the edge uh, using my finger to control the descent. That way the plug doesn't fall down and hit the bottom and then close the gap. We want to make sure we don't uh, close the gap up by dropping our flashlights on it. There we go, that one's in. Come here, flashlight. You gravity-stricken illuminator. And that last one, drop you down. There we go. Okay, so, grabbing uh, my universal. I'll go in by hand, start the threads, and then I'll zip down the line with the electron ratchet and apply some torque here. We don't start threads with power tools. Because if you get it wrong, you're gonna cross thread some aluminum cylinder heads and that's just never a, never a good day. There is a uh, crush washer on these plugs and I'm just crushing the crush washer. That's why they're taking a minute to uh, come up on torque. Ooh, you know what? I have an idea. Shorter ratchet. I didn't exactly have the throw space to swing that longer ratchet, so I got the, the short shanked one. for the front hole on the back cylinder. That's the easiest of the two holes back there. the socket down on that rearmost uh, rearmost plug drop that guy in and I can sneak in with a little swivel extension or the double swivel rather slip that guy in the ratchet next get that guy tight and that'll about conclude this hard side back here after we get the coils on
clickage. Give it back. Just have to disconnect the swivel. It's too long to, I think, pull out with the socket here. Oh, I dropped the socket in the hole. That's fine. Magnet on a stick. Pull that guy right out. There we go. Okay, a little bit of dielectric on our coil boots and we can drop these guys back into position. Okay, a couple little squirts of grease in here to contain the electrons and prevent uh, moisture from getting in there. We'll drop them all in and bolt them down with one swift action of efficiency. back that should be fun I can't even see the hole oh but I can feel the holes I flexed the boots ever so slightly so now the tips are in the hole just kind of kind of wiggle it in there there we go we'll grab all the uh fasteners here it's a series of 10 mils Okay, those are the easy ones. There's a hard one that we can't see out back. Can even feel it. It's behind this uh, big old harness again. Let's get after it with the zero drive. Yeah, the advantage to this, I think, is uh, it has very, very minimal backlash. And that's going to help to get that fastener to turn in. Can't get my fingers on it. Come on. How did I get it out? There. Yeah, minimal backlash. So in these tight spaces, I can still get a swing out of the handle on the ratchet and apply some rotational forces to the the, uh, the fasteners. Beautiful. Look at that thing turn. Right, we'll pull this guy back off. No space. Then we got one more bolt on the top of that coil right there. All good to go. Beautiful. All right, so this side's done. Let me jump over to that other side and we'll repeat procedure. Might do that one in a super high speed lightning fast motion just to get through it because we uh, 
we saw the uh, anguish of the easy side. Uh, we got to do it again on the hard side. So let's go over there. I'll speed this up. We'll yank all those plugs out, drop the new ones in, boroscope it real quick just to see what kind of nasty we have on the uh, on the pistons, and then we can run the cleaner through this unit. I have to interrupt what we're doing for a quick spam call. Hello. Boop. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi. This is Chris calling you from student loan purchase and saying that. How are you doing today? Okay, I need to inform you this call is being monitored and recorded for quality control. Is that okay with you? Sorry. I said I have to inform you that this call is being monitored and recorded for quality control. Is that okay with you? Yes, no, sorry. Hello? I have to update you that your student loan file has been qualified for business by the U.S. Department of Education. So have you received an email or notification regarding this? Yes, th this call is being monitored and recorded for quality control. Is that okay with you? Yeah, they gave up. I guess it's not okay with them. You can call me and tell me a bunch of nonsense. Anyway, back to uh, pulling our spark plugs out. Yeah, see, they waste my time. I'm gonna waste their time. That's just how. That's just how that works. It's that a uh, eye for an eye situation, I suppose. Oh, I forgot to. Uh, Engage super high speed lightning fast motion here. Okay, well that was uh, remarkably and unnecessarily difficult. Uh, now I'm gonna do it all again in the, uh, in the reverse order. So we're dropping in the plugs. Um, I'm not gonna scope those rear holes back there because there's just, uh, there's just no way that's gonna happen with some, some ease and we'll be able to accomplish the goals just by scoping the front holes. So that's just how it's gonna be. Uh, I realize that may leave some of you feeling uh, unsatisfied and incomplete but there's really nothing uh, I can do about that so uh, my sincerest apologies it is what it is okay got four plugs in in the back I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys uh, tightened down right now to uh, minimize my suffering throughout this entire process torque these in a minute. We're just running them down. Okay, that's the last four. Let me get these guys tight, and then I'm gonna drop the coils back in, and then we're gonna move up to these front four spark plugs, and I can boroscope those two cylinders. I just wanna get through this hard part right here because I'm suffering from attrition, and it, uh, I'm just not having a good time, and this hurts. So I just, I just wanna get through it and get it over with. So look, I'm just gonna go in here, long reach ratchet style. To, get the necessary torque on these plugs. 
the electric ratchet bottom them, bottom them out, but the crush washers have it crushed and they're just not tight yet. I need a zero drive ratchet for this application. There's a lot of backlash in this and it's making for some wasted effort. A little bit more. This is taking like all day and an hour. There we go. To get that one kind of tight. And now that, that one's kind of tight, let me try to get this, uh, get these coils back in position here. You know, I think I might be better off just uh, disconnecting these electrical connectors on this side. I think. Come on. I'm not enjoying this job. I'm not enjoying it at all. I hope my my efforts here for the sake of science uh, are appreciated. Because I just uh, remembered I need to go back in and take some of these coils back out just to just to see if my cleaning stuff was effective or not. And on top of that, it's gonna be hot next time I go back in there. Oh. Okay, I'm going in deep now, I gotta lay down. I'm gonna need two hands in here to get these tips in the holes. I think. Oh, there we go, woohoo. Okay, I have one coil. Yeah, I'm like, I'm laying on top of this engine right now. The feet are dangling off the front of the bull guard, or the cattle guard, or brush guard, or whatever you want to call it. The ranch hand. coil in position let's get uh, coil numero dos kind of set up here a little bit of lube in the hole Get in there, coil. Oh, I'm dropping it. No bolt, don't go anywhere, no.
There we go. somewhere I don't know where we're going but we're getting there okay now I need to boroscope these front two cylinders real quick like and see what they're looking like inside okie dokes boroscope is fired back up let's go ahead and probe these uh, remaining cylinders here and just see what the, uh, the pistons and combustion chambers are looking like then uh, that will conclude the formality of this inspection and we can get uh, get those plugs and coils back on and get that cleaner run through this unit. So taking a look, yeah, we see a good bit of carbon right here on top of the piston right there at the edge. Zoom in some, you see it flaking off. That's actually a pretty good one to revisit uh, second time around after we run cleaner through this. So that one's looking good. Let's go back to the, the next cylinder. Well, it's not looking good. It's all dirty, but you get, you know what I'm saying? And this next one, yeah, we're looking at something very similar here. Bunch of carbon and whatnot hanging out. A lot of buildup on top of the piston. Yeah, right there, especially in that corner. Look at all that. Okay. So now we've got a preliminary uh, visual baseline on uh, the carbon inside of this engine. Let's throw the remaining uh, spark plugs back in, get the coils on. We'll run the cleaner through this unit and then we will pull off uh, probably one coil on this side and one coil on that side, pull the plugs back out. And then we can see just how effective the cleaning solution is uh, on a carbon up engine. Okay, four more sparking plugs to go. Get them dropped in. We'll torque them down, tighten them up, get the coils on, etc. etc. Whoa, I almost dropped it. Do not drop your spark plugs. That's not okay. Time for some torquage. Tight. Tight. Okay, a little bit of grease here. Get this coil out of the way. Flip it around. Bend the tips. Stick them in. Bottom it out. There we go. Screw it on. Two more to tighten down. Of 
running into some fitment issues there. Again, with that extension. There we go, that one's good. And this one, I think that one's actually pretty loose. Yeah. grow weary of this. Sixteen spark plugs. Wonder why we needed sixteen. Okay. Come here, coil. A little bit of lube in the hole, there we go. Shove those guys in there. How did I do this? Stick it in sideways, twist it. Okay, two more bolts. Mm -hmm. go all right we got them all all the plugs are in woohoo uh, victory kind of we're not there yet though I need to clean the throttle body out and get some intake cleaner stuff set up and we're gonna run that cleaner through this engine uh, before this operation is complete okay so what we're looking for is this setup right here we've got the 44k this is gonna go into the fuel tank and that's gonna run through the injectors. Then we've got the big can of the platinum cleaner and that's gonna run through the intake manifold, clean the combustion chambers and the back side of the valves and anything else it comes into contact with for that matter, including the, uh, the pistons, combustion chambers, etc. And it's gonna to help to break up and clean away all that nasty business. And this video and this operations for the naysayers I'm going to prove that it actually does work, even though people think that it is lizard lotion slash snake oil. We're going to find out differently today, right here and right now. So first things first, we're going to manually clean out this throttle body because we can see there's a bit of buildup around the edge right there. Uh, nothing too crazy, but I am going to go ahead and clean that out with a towel and uh, just some penetrating oil will be sufficient. No need to use a heavy duty solvent, uh, just oil will clean that out no problem. There are uh, throttle body cleaners out there on the market and I'm sure they work just fine, but I see no reason to not just use what works and this penetrating oil works uh, without fail. So we're just gonna use that. Go in there and hold the throttle body open. Kinda just wipe that down around the edges of that bore. See that? And then same thing on the, uh, the other side of that throttle bore. Give it a little bit of a wipe. Wipe down the throttle plate on the edges especially. 
and get the bottom side if you can. There we go. Nice and clean like. That's good. Okay, so now I can take my intake tubing, which is also the air filter lid, get that back in position, and we can reconnect that. Just like so. Gravity. Over here on this side, I'll snap the uh, air box lid back into place and plug the PCB in. There. So, what I'm going to do here in order to uh, deliver this cleaner properly is I'm actually going to go ahead and separate this section of the tube because I need to run the nozzle uh, for the cleaner delivery device into this tube as close to the throttle body as possible. So what I think I'll, I'll do here is disconnect this guy. Yeah, see that nozzle right there? That's gonna spray that cleaner out as a very, very fine mist. Um, actually, you know what? I have a better idea. Uh, normally I wouldn't do it that way or this way, but I think for, uh, for visual aid and learning experiences, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this up ever so slightly. So normally we would run this nozzle into this tube and get it pointed down over the throttle body like so. I think what I'm gonna do is rig this up somehow, some way where it just holds this nozzle stationary uh, over this throttle body and we can actually watch the spray uh, as it's running into, uh, into the engine. Yeah, I think if I just clamp this on in such a fashion like this, be able to monitor that spray pattern and see uh, just how it goes in and how it dissipates into the engine. I think we should, uh, I think I'm gonna try that this time. Yeah. Yeah, slightly different from the, uh, the stated order of operations, but I think for science, this might help us out just a little bit more, a little bit better, more better -er. Yeah, we're gonna try this. See what happens here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I might have to tape it, but I think that'll work. So what I've got to do is we're gonna take this pressure vessel right here. I call it a pressure vessel because it does use shop air to supply pressure to the vessel to create the mist on its way out. What we need to do is fill this thing up with the appropriate fluid, depressurize it. You opening? holding pressure that's weird anyway we're gonna open this thing up and pour in our can of cleaning solution we'll hook up shop air to it start the engine get it up to temperature and then we'll begin the spray delivery process of our chemical cleaning agent we'll crack this guy open wonder why it's holding pressure shouldn't be that valve's working yeah yeah it dumped okay anyway open this guy up Very good. One can of BG Platinum Intake Cleaner Solution. Dump that in. Fill it on up. Stinky. This stuff's nasty. Okay, we need some air pressure. I've uh, reevaluated my mounting system right here to get some appropriate spacing. So that should spray in uh, fairly evenly and it will perform the job. I will not get a check engine light because there is no mass airflow sensor here. And I've got the air intake temperature sensor probe uh, already, or well, it's reconnected and that will be sufficient right now. So the ECM will not detect any sensor problems. Let's go ahead, get some shop air, ready to rock and roll on our delivery device here. And then uh, we'll fire this engine up, bring it up to temperature, and then begin the spray process. Okay, shop air coming in. So now we have pressure in pressure. Shut the valve off. I had the valve on and look, we're already starting to spray. See that? 
that is our cleaning solution. So what I need to do before this thing sprays, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the engine up. We need to let it come up to temperature because heat is a critical factor in this process being effective. Okay, she's alive. Right here we have no spray, which is good. That's not what we're looking for just yet. We need to let it come up to temp and then we will begin uh, spraying in the cleaning solution from the tank right here. So I'm gonna give it five, 10 minutes to uh, come up to operating temperature and then we'll go ahead and begin the process. Stand by, don't go anywhere. Okay, so in order to accelerate the process, I will install this accelerator depressor right here. It's kind of like a caulking gun with a little hook on the end of it that hooks into the steering wheel. And as you trigger this thing out, it'll expand the rod and press that against the uh, accelerator pedal, uh, thus raising the engine idle. So we're gonna get this guy installed right here against the steering wheel. You just run her down, it hits the pedal, it presses the pedal. That's gonna raise our RPM. We're looking for 1800 to 2000. And I'll turn off the AC to help stabilize that idle. 2500, a little high. And back it down some. A little high again. Yeah, you kinda gotta dial it in, and then once you get it, you're good. I want to see about 2,000. That's where I like to run it. There we go. Beautiful, right there, that's the sweet spot. Okay, we'll leave her alone for a minute, let it come up to 10. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Our gauge says we're up to operating temperature, that's on the cooling system. So since cooling system is warmed up, that tells me that the combustion chambers are definitely warm. So now we can go ahead, open up the valve, and it's gonna start to spray the mist into the throttle body. So let's fire it up, get her open. There's our spray. You can see the spray pattern right there. So all of this cleaner is making its way into the intake stream and it's atomized as it's going in. So it's being carried into the combustion chambers as a mist. What we do, we let this go in for about uh, 30, 40 seconds. Then we head into the cabin, slam some throttle, give it a wide open throttle burp. That way it kind of sucks up everything that uh, is in the intake and it will disperse it into the engine so we're just gonna push this down a little bit give it some throttle and let it come back down we're gonna do that every 30 or 40 seconds so here you guys come out here keep an eyeball on the spray and I'm gonna go back inside and throttle this thing up so it ingests as much of this cleaner as possible so I'm going to set y'all up right over here to keep an eye on our spray pattern here. Check the exhaust real quick and see if we've got any smoke or anything burning off out of the pipes. Not yet. Got a fan going to blow the exhaust out so we don't die. And again, you kind of got to know what you're doing so you don't die. You do this in an enclosed environment and you give yourself carbon monoxide poisoning and then you die. So just like my t-shirts in my merchandise store says, you have to know what you're doing or you die. And I don't want to die. I almost died last week. I don't feel like dying this week. In a world of
constant evolution, where the line between man and machine begins to blur. A new age of possibility emerges. cleaning solution just a couple of shot glasses left in our pressure vessel here spray is going in rather nicely let's go inside and check the dash for warning indicators and make sure the temperature is in line looking good in the neighborhood a couple more wide open throttle blurbs here suck in some more of that uh that good stuff get it nice and clean like uh oh Oh no, my thing's stuck. There we go. Yep, a couple more throttle blurps. Make sure everybody gets ingested. Then what we're gonna do is once we're out of cleaner, we shut this engine down, let it cool off for about five, 10 minutes. Then we can take it out on, on the road, test drive it, vlog it a little bit, run it through its RPM band. Then we're gonna bring her back in pull a couple spark plugs out and check the condition of the pistons and the combustion chambers with the boroscope. And we're gonna find out once and for all whether this stuff is any good or if it is junk. And that is the plan. Uh oh, look at here, we're running low. Let me shake it. Let me shake the thing here and get all the, last, uh, the remaining last bit of goodies out. Spray, spray, spray. Running out of spray. A little bit more. Come on, baby. A little more. We want all of it. That's the good stuff. A little bit more wide open throttle. Okay, let's go check our, our spray device here. And yeah, we're running out. Let's go ahead and shut it down. That's the end of our cleaning solution. Now it's time to go ahead and turn the engine off, put the intake back together, let this thing cool for uh, about five, 10 minutes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's that time clock. Again, it's not the phone, but it's close. Do, 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 do. Okay, enough screwing around here. Let's get rid of our tooling and whatnot. We'll disconnect our uh, a little nozzle device we've got set up over here. Get that guy out of the way. We'll take our intake tube, put that guy back in position and get it all clamped in. Get the engine cover back on and then we're gonna head it back out on the road. Plug this guy in right here. Good to go. Excellent. Get rid of that too. Alrighty, eight minutes later, we've got the cover back on, tubes back on, hose clamps are secure, tools are out of the way. We're all cleaned up. Let's close the hood, restart the engine. We're gonna take this thing out and uh, we're gonna go beat on it a little bit. I'm gonna give it the old Italian tune-up, restarting the engine. Let's find out if we're gonna chooch any smoke out since it cooled off some. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. All right, so revving your Hemi at idle is one thing, putting her under a massive load at full throttle, that's a whole nother endeavor. And we're gonna go enter that realm of operation right now. Okay, backing up the auto, looking good behind us. Honks for safety. Clear over here, clear back there. Let's get around the corner. Let's see, climate control back on because it's getting a little warm in here. Straight shot on the way out, good to go. Okie doke, so here's the plan. We're gonna go out, we're gonna hit the normal test drive loop up and over the bridge. That's going to afford us a spot for some full throttle, wide open, 100% load 
and at that point it's going to start to seriously raise combustion temperatures inside the chamber and uh, any and all carbon that has been affected by the cleaner will be breaking up at that point in time in which case it will migrate its way right out of the tailpipe leaving us with a uh, nice clean top engine okay traffic's clear ready to rock and roll more steam full speed ahead so what do you guys think is this uh, cleaner going to be effective or is it snake oil register your comments in the comment section down below what's your opinion on the matter i'm curious to hear what you guys have to say before we get to the uh the final finale here Throttle feels pretty good. Yellow light and traffic and I can go. All right, full speed ahead. Throttle on the floor. Well, it didn't blow up. So we're good. So far, so good. Hello, shop. Goodbye, shop. Okay, easing off the throttle. One more time, wide open throttle. Beautiful. And some brakes. Slow it down. I was uh, in excess of the speed limit by 16%. Slow way down right here. Get one more throttle pull in. Beautiful. It's definitely got a hemi question is do we have a clean hemi i think we do yeah the goal here with all this throttle is not to blow a bunch of air through it we want to get some temperature some hot temperature we want to raise the temperature and that's going to help to break up all these uh pieces of carbon and deposits and varnish and debris and things of that nature you know the same principle applies to the oil system cleaner stuff it's uh, highly effective as the temperature goes up. It's uh, what they, they would call uh, temperature activated. I tell you, I need to slow my roll a little bit. I just saw some more law enforcement over there and I'm over here speeding around in somebody else's car. I'm not in violation of uh, local ordinances, but I'd, uh, I, I would like to not attract unnecessary attention by making Dodge Hemi noises because dodge, no dodge noises do tend to attract law enforcement. That, that's just how it is. Headed back into the shop space over here. We're gonna swing her back in. I'm gonna pull off the, uh, the front two coils on either side. We're gonna pull out one spark plug and we're gonna go back in with the boroscope and we're just gonna take a look at what these pistons look like and compare that with uh, what the, uh, the before version looked like and we're gonna determine once and for all whether or not this cleaner stuff has any validity to it, validity to it or not, words. All right, nose it on in. Right here in the middle should be good. Good, good, good. Right here. Excellent. Parking the auto. Powering down. Okay, hood up. Hello, Hemi. Lights on. Let's get in there and see what we're working with. Okay, coil coming out. Two bolts. I'm not even going to pull the engine cover back off. I can reach everything I think I need to reach. If I can't, I'll, I'll figure it out. You Longer socket for the wind. Okay, there's our coil pack. Smart plug socket going in. And again, I'm only pulling one plug out. We don't need to do both. 
it's uh, not necessary. There's our plug. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. We've got the horoscope fired up, ready to rock and roll. Camera's on, spark plug has been removed and we are going in. We're gonna take a look, see what exactly this chamber is looking like inside. So there's a, there's our spark plug hole. We're coming up on it. It's now hot. I just touched that spark plug there, that hurt. Anyway, I'm gonna get in that hole there. Okay, so there's, get over there. So we can see there's top of our piston right there. Uh, one thing that's standing out to me is this appears to be wet. See all that wetness going on in there? I'm wondering if that's pulled up cleaning solution that's hanging out inside of the chamber still. And there's some dust on there. We need to get rid of that. I can't see what I'm trying to see because of the glare. So we definitely have a difference in how this appears. There's some wetness going on, but I can't really tell if we've had any carbon breakup or not. Okay. So tell you what, here's the plan. I think what needs to happen here is I'm gonna put the spark plug back in and I'm gonna let this thing sit overnight. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna drive it one more time. We're gonna pull the plugs out and then check it after another test drive. We may or may not have had enough time for uh, the proper amount of saturation to take place. So we're gonna have it uh, go through a cool down cycle, one more warm up cycle, then I'll do another cool down cycle and then we're gonna pull the plugs out again and then take a look and see what those chambers are looking like inside of the vehicle. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. We've got the horoscope fired up, ready to rock and roll. Camera's on, spark plug has been removed and we are going in. We're gonna take a look, see what exactly this chamber is looking like inside. So there's a, uh, there's our spark plug hole. We're coming up on it. How hot. I just touched that spark plug there. That hurt. Anyway. I'm gonna get in that hole there. Okay, so there's... Here, get over there. So we can see there's top of our piston right there. Uh, one thing that's standing out to me is this appears to be wet. See all that wetness going on in there? I'm wondering if that's pulled up cleaning solution that's hanging out inside of the chamber still. Hang on, there's some dust on there. We need to get rid of that. I can't see what I'm trying to see because of the glare. So we definitely have a difference in how this appears there's some wetness going on, but I can't really tell if we've had any carbon breakup or not. Look at how much saturation has taken place with that carbon right there. What this chemical is doing is it's building up in that carbon or absorbing into that carbon. And as this carbon heat cycles, it's gonna be able to break that up and chip it away and remove it from the inside of the engine. Now, the top cylinder cleaning is not the uh, the primary function of, uh, of that cleaner. Our primary function here is actually intake valves and valve faces and intake runners. However, once it makes it past all of that, we do end up inside of the combustion chamber. And again, it can still do its uh, do its work against the carbon buildup in the chambers. So over here on the, uh, the driver's side, let's go in one more time and see if we see anything similar to what we saw on the number one cylinder uh, 
on the passenger side. So we're going back, trying to get past the, uh, there it is. And I'll tell you what, that piston's up at the top of its bore. Uh, let's give the key a bump real quick and see if we can't run that piston down for a little bit of a better view. Key bump. There we go. And I did have the tip pulled out. That way it wouldn't smack into it and, uh, and break my camera. So let's see. Let's get that past. Get in there. It's uh, stuck. Oh, there we go. Got it past the threads. Oh, look at that upper right-hand corner. See that? It's a bunch of flaked away carbon. We can see freshly exposed piston. And there's a bunch of chunks in the center. Looks like they're starting to come apart as well. Yeah, we can clearly see how that, uh, that holds some saturation. Here's a pic of the... Uh, the first time we probed this before the cleaner, you can see this carbon is just uh, all flaky and dry. And now it's got some chemical absorption going on here. And again, as this thing heat cycles, it's gonna help to break that business up and ultimately remove it from the engine. Let's power this thing down. Pew. All right, guys, I think that's gonna conclude this operation. Uh, on this particular uh, Doge product right here. I'm gonna throw these spark plugs back in, back this unit out, get it parked, and uh, release it back to the consumer who uh, who would like to have their truck back. So as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this uh, process and this repair procedure in the comment section uh, down below. Uh, do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a tune-up, in a doge, in a day, in a transmission.